on social media, watching this morning, welcome as well. We're going to start our service right now by singing our opening chant, God is my source. One, two, three. <laughs> Here we go. God is my source. God is my power. God gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings. God gives me everything I need. God is my source. God is my power. God gives me Good morning. Good morning. We're delighted that you've joined us in person or via Facebook Live and Zoom. And for those of you who are here in person, please be sure to silence your cell phones and thank you. Okay, let's join together in prayer. We are blessed this morning knowing that we were brought here to this sanctuary, this sanctuary that is light and love and joy and truth, and we know that that is God's presence here and God's presence within each of us. And so when we look around and recognize that God is the divine coordinator of all of nature, then we know that God is in all of it. We, we cannot unknow this once we know it. And so I know that this is my truth. I know that my path this morning has led me here. It has led me to a knowing that God is all there is. It's led me to knowing that my innermost self is joy, is love, is, is the truth of the knowing of my abundance and my divine inheritance. And this path led us all here today, knowing that that love, that joy, that peace was present in all that came together to make this service what it's going to be today. And that is perfection because it's already done. That same joy, that same love, that same source, that is already present in the knowing and the truth of what Dr. Mark has to say to us today. It is perfection. It is a love, it is a light that has brought us here and it will stay with us as we leave these doors. But we know the truth always that God is perfect, God is us, and we say yes to all of the love there is. I know this truth and I'm so grateful for it. I say thank you and I release my word into this law. Knowing it is so, it is done and so it is. And together we say, Amen. Amen.
gifts of God are in my life. I am blessed. Please rise and join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. <clears throat> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please remain standing for our congregational song, I Am at Home in the Heart of God. Okay, please be seated. <laughs> We're going to meditate for the next five minutes. I invite you to close your eyes and silently repeat the mantra, God's the love that I am. If your mind wanders, just bring it back to silently repeating, God's, God's the love that I am. And I'll bring us out of the meditation in five minutes.
Each day I live, I want to be a day to give the best of me. I'm only one, but not alone. My finest day is yet unknown I broke my heart fought every gain I taste the sweet and I face the pain I rise and fall but through it all this much remains I want one moment in time When I'm more than I thought I could be When all of my dreams are hard Beat away And the answers are all up to me Give me one moment in time When I'm racing with destiny And in that one moment of time I will feel I will feel eternity I live to be the very best I want it all no time for less now only the plans Now only my chance Here in my hand Give me one Moment in time When I'm more Than I thought I could be When all of my dreams are hard beat away and the answers are all up to me give me one moment in time when I'm racing with destiny One moment of time I will be I will be Eternity You're, you're winner Of a lifetime If you seize that moment in time When I'm racing with destiny And in that one moment of time I will be, I will be, I will be
good morning. Thank you for being here. Yeah, we're going to have church. I like that. I like that. Oh, that's good. Uh, oh, it's late. It's late, isn't it? Doesn't it seem late? seems late to me. I, um, I've been studying St. Paul. He was always an interesting character to me. I've generally not liked him very much. Uh, but I thought, you know, like a third of what we have in the Bible comes from St. Paul, so I guess I should pay attention, right? Oh, my God, it was so difficult because I had so much opinion. You know, and what I think of is, I think of the teachings of Emma Curtis Hopkins where she says, I have no accusation against anyone. And she says, that's the place we need to be in consciousness, where we have no accusation against anyone or anything. And boy, that's a really difficult place. I find that a very elusive room in consciousness. <laughs> I, I, like, I really want to get there, but boy, I have... Uh, Lots of opinion. Uh, so about St. Paul. So St. Paul was, uh, was Saul. And he's a tax collector. And his jam is that basically he persecutes the Christians, right? That's like his deal. So one day on the road to Damascus, he has a spiritual experience. He has a real awakening. And it, the way it comes to him is in a blinding flash that takes him days to recover from. And he hears a voice that says, Saul, why do you persecute me? Hmm? It's like, wow, that's curious. That's a really, really curious thing. So the part that I want to focus on today, though, is that in a blinding flash, in a moment, it all changes for him. He now becomes the biggest advocate of the Gentiles who are really his audience, bringing them the teachings of Jesus. Right? Now, what he thought he was doing early on was that he thought he was uh, going to show Jewish people that this is the Messiah, right? I mean, because that's really, really what he believed, but they were not so much on board with that. So this group of Gentiles in little ragtag communities uh, all over the place, in Galicia, in Corinthia, in Ephesus, uh, there are these little communities that form around this teaching. Now, you know, when I was growing up, I always thought, you know, oh, well, St. Paul's letter to the church. And I imagine this church was thousands and thousands of people, you know. And lo and behold, what we know now historically actually is that each of those churches that Paul started were tiny little churches. They were little home churches, 30, maybe, maybe, maybe 40 people at the most. But these were very, very small groups. But what happened was so important that look how it has actually affected us today uh, you know, a, a couple thousand years later. Now, Paul, I think, is very interesting because he did not actually know Jesus. He never met Jesus. And yet, through his devotion, and, you know, starting with this experience, this enlightenment experience that he had on the road to Damascus, he becomes the biggest proponent for teaching people the message of Jesus. And it, and it largely is to this non-Jewish Gentile population. So I think that that's really interesting, that he was going one direction, something happened, and he completely went the other direction. And this is what makes me hopeful for today. That for today, there's so much of what we are dealing with today, we've honestly been aware of for at least 40 or 50 years, if we tell the truth. You know, we were hearing about a lot of this stuff a long time ago, and we all thought, oh, it's so far away. People, you know, we, they're, they're just... They're just crying wolf too early. We don't need to think about that that seriously. And apparently we were wrong. Apparently we were wrong because these things that we started to become aware of 40 years ago, 50 years ago, they are really, really starting to have a huge impact on us. Now, I had sort of always thought, well, you know, things have a way of working out and I think this is going to work out. And so, But what happened in my own life is starting about four and a half years ago, new people were born into our family. These new little souls just sort of popped up. And all of a sudden, I started thinking about, wow, they're going to be here a lot longer than I am. I mean, they're going to have decades and decades here on Earth, and I will be gone. I will be off at the next stop on the bus line, you know, whatever that is, you know, but I won't be here for that. And so now it becomes incredibly important to me to contribute to making the world a better place so that it will be there for them. I think about things that I did when I was a kid, and I think, gee, I wonder if they're going to be able to do those things. You know, will they actually be able to go to the beach and play on the beach, 
or will be the sun or will the sun rays be so harmful or will the beach actually be in their bedroom you know because they're sort of coastal so you know that might all change you know so so for me it becomes really important that i want to participate with my consciousness and also with my energy in the world to contribute to this being a better safer kinder more loving place now i believe that all of us here have an understanding of spiritual principle but you know, that's different than really, really getting it. I mean, you know, I, the understanding, I think the intellectual understanding, I have probably had for years. But you know, most healing happens incrementally. I've talked about this a lot, that we, we, we're fascinated by those healings that happen, boom, you know, and all of a sudden, like Paul, uh, Saul, who became Paul on the road to Damascus, everything changes. But I find that most healing in life happens incrementally. We treat and treat and treat, and we meditate, we meditate, we meditate, we affirm, we affirm, we affirm, we try to have a good attitude, we try to be positive, we be, you know, do it all, do it all, and we feel a little like, ping, there's like a little bit of a change. But that's good. That's really, really the encouragement. You know, the, so we understand, like I said, everybody here, we have some understanding of spiritual principle. But that, there is a difference between having an understanding, the intellectual understanding, and then the actual practical application in our life. And this is why I think Ernest Holmes was so incredibly brilliant, is that he felt that if our spiritual teaching didn't help us in practical, everyday ways, it wasn't worth anything. Right? So yes, there is cause and effect. And we've had lots and lots of cause in a particular direction in recent years. And this is why we keep tasting slices of hell, I think, you know? That it's not what other people do, but what it triggers in us, you know? How do we respond? What's the consciousness that I meet what the world seems to be presenting me with? What's the consciousness that I bring to that party, right? We think, you know, we're crazy because of, you know, what's going on out here in the world. Oh, all, we say, oh, all this stuff out here, it makes me so crazy, all this, this out here, right? But we are crazy <laughs> because we're not aligned with that place within us that's beyond the human storyline. See, this is the trick in Science of Mind. We, we have to always stay aligned with spiritual truth. We have to always know that we are in relationship and rapport with the principal power and presence of God that's within us. And then from that, the storyline will unfold. Like we say, God is love. We say that all the time. Well, that love is real. You know, that love is absolutely real, and it never, ever changes. So given the circumstances in my mind right now, given the circumstances, say, in your mind right now, uh, that's the road that we find ourselves on, right? We all have circumstances, so it must be that these circumstances that we are dealing with right now are absolutely the right and perfect circumstances. There's no mistake in the circumstances that we are dealing with. Now, is that good for you or is that bad for you? Well, you know, if it's not good for you, you can change your mind. And this is where we start in Science of Mind. If we hold our mind in a loving, principled way, you know, if we keep coming back to spiritual principle, what's the greatest truth I know? What is the greatest truth I know? What's the most loving thing to do here? What's the most compassionate thing to do here? I believe that if I keep doing that over and over again, if I hold my mind in that loving, principled place, the planet will get healed. How can that be? Because that means we're getting healed, right? But nothing out here will heal until something in here heals, and that's in each of us individually. So haven't people, us, people we know, suffered enough? God, I think so. I mean, I, I think it's remarkable that people are as upbeat as they are, having been through what they've been through, right? But that's our job. That's our job, right? So have we learned anything, though, from the suffering that we have been through? If we haven't learned anything from it, I believe we're going to experience more of it. It's going to come around again and again and again, maybe with a new face or a new body, new, new whatever, right? But it's going to come around if I haven't learned everything I need to learn from that. And gosh, I really, really hope we have. And people say all the time, well, why do, why do we have to suffer? Why do we have to suffer? And I don't think we do. I think we could absolutely learn through joy and peace and love. I mean, that sounds great. God, today I want to learn through joy. Today I want to learn through love. Today I want to learn through peace. But you know what? We forget that the minute we get up out of our prayer chair. right? And so then what gets our attention is pain and suffering. I'm sorry, but it does, doesn't it? It really does. I mean, pain and suffering really wakes me up. Oh, that hurts. 
I got to pay attention here. Right? When things are going well, and eh, my attention is not always so, so good. But I believe that we have suffered enough. Now, God is not outside of us in the science of mind teaching. We teach God, yes, God is everywhere, but the God that we will get to know is within us right here. Now, it seems, it seems to me, I think we're waking up. I really believe we are. It has to be. But you know, they say it's always darkest before the dawn. And I hope we are in the darkest part right now and that the dawn is coming really, really soon. I think that it probably is. Now, God is not something that we get in the science of mind. God is something that we give because love is not something that we are out to get. It's that love within us is something that we have a need to give out to the world. So it seems to me like things are all speeding up. You know, I mean, does it feel that way to you? I just think like things are really clicking along at a really fast pace. I know sometimes days are long, but weeks and months are really quick, aren't they? At least that's my experience. So when enough people agree on something, like a new idea, then a new possibility can burst forth. And I think, you know, the reason you know, why I say that I think things are actually waking up or why people are waking up is I think now more than ever, more people agree that, that something new has got to come forward, that we are ready and we are willing and we are saying yes to something new coming forward in consciousness first because that's where it starts and then it will appear out here on the outer plane. So I think we all have the capacity to affect the transformation of the planet. Everybody does. Everybody does. And we have to decide. You know, we must choose. It's, it's about what we're going to choose. You know, am I going to just say, ah, oh, my consciousness doesn't make any difference? And if you think that's so, that will be your experience. But if you know that, like Troward says, my mind is a center of divine operation. And as such, it's here to express something greater than it ever has in the past. Right? So we have to decide. We have to choose. Like, I choose God. I choose to be a loving person. Now, I think things are bad if we look at the world and we see some areas where things are not going well, which is not hard to find, because we have violated the laws of the universe. If we look, if we tell the truth, and this is ugly, and I'm sorry, but sometimes you've got to pull back the Band-Aid, you know, that things are bad because we have violated the laws of the universe. We have violated the law of love. Right? It's bad because we don't love each other. I'm sorry, that's it. I, 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 maybe this seems like an oversimplification, but I think it's not going well in the areas it's not going well because we don't make loving and caring about each other the priority. I think loving and caring about each other, it, it, um, well, I could just go on and on about this, but that'll be for another day. So we don't honor, so, and what I think this means is that we're not honoring that the life of God is expressing in and through all people. Right? God is expressing in and through all people. So if we know God is expressing in and through everyone, then how I treat them, how I think about them, what I might be able to do for them, certainly it becomes more important. Because everything we do, we teach this, everything, everything we do has consequences. Everything affects everything. Everything we do makes more heaven or it makes more hell. That's up to us. Right? Because heaven and hell, they're states of consciousness. We experience them right here on earth right now. And although I know there's lots of heaven, and that ha those heavenly moments, those heavenly experiences are wonderful. When we feel love, when we feel connection with other people, I think that's heaven. But you know, we've had a lot, a lot of hell in the last few years, it seems like. Right? And so will we embrace a life of love now or kick that down the road some more? Maybe we'll deal with it later. Yeah, 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 kick that down the road. See, that's what I think we started doing years ago is kicking things down the road. And now what's happened is they have gotten to a point where they cannot be ignored. I used to have a little dog, a little terrier. His name was Emmett. He was truly the love of my life. And his Native American name is He Who Will Not Be Ignored. That was his name. And uh, because he just insisted. He just insisted. And I think that that's kind of like what we must do. We have to be insistent in that way. Will we embrace a life of love? I have to insist that I do. I have to absolutely insist because everything, I think everything, you know, going to Trader Joe's and going to the Wells Fargo and going to the dry clean, all of that, it seems so mundane on one hand, but everything is an opportunity to be part of the healing of the world. It is. You know, how? How? By healing us. When I go to the dry cleaners, if I show up as a loving, conscious, healed person with an abundance of love to give, you know, it doesn't mean everybody at the dry cleaners is coming to my house for dinner. 
you know? But it doesn't mean I'm going to be nice, I'm going to be civil, I'm going to be kind, I'm going to be polite, you know? Because everything is an opportunity to be part of the healing of the world. Because, because everything is an opportunity for us to be the ones who turn on the light. Everything is an opportunity for us to think in a more conscious, loving way. Everything, everything, every person. It's like the curriculum is divinely designed for each and every one of us. You think, oh, I just happened to run into somebody? Pfft, I don't believe that at all. I believe you happened to run into them because God absolutely intended for you to run into them. They were the perfect person for you to have contact with for any of a number of reasons, but certainly for the healing of yourself, the healing of them, and the healing of the planet. See, the limitations that we experience on Earth, I think all of that limitation is the absence of love, right? Which could just as easily be present. So, you know, we're either going to be solution-oriented or we're going to be problem-oriented. And you know how I feel about the problem-oriented. It's no great talent to say you see the problem. You know, it's no great talent to talk about the problem. You know, in fact, actually, you just reinforce the problem by talking about it, I believe. You know, because right now, I think we are in a time where there's no standing still. You know, that I have to put something, I have to put some good energy consistently into the universe. I think that's really, really important for all of us. However we might do that, it has to be ours to do every day because we're on a spiritual path. And this is the cost of being on a spiritual path, is we have to put some good energy into the world that we live in on a daily basis. I think we have to focus on how good things could be, right? Because I think things can be great. I think things can be great for everybody on the face of the earth. See, because I have a really big God. I have a God that's so big that I can imagine and see in my mind's eye that the whole world could be a peaceful place, the whole world could be well-fed. You say, oh, if everything's good, what are we all going to do? I don't know, we're going to party, we're going to dance, we're going to eat well. You know, Maybe that's part of it. I think if everybody felt that they were loved and they were well-fed, we would have no problems on the face of the earth. That's it for me. See, I know that's very simple, but I think that's where it all starts. It starts with, do we feel loved and are we fed? Right? Fed. And if you got that, then you're pretty much, you're, you're most of the way there. See, I think we have to show the universe the seriousness of our intention. You know, what does our, think about this now, I'm, now I'm, I'm asking you this question sincerely. What does your heart want, right? I think it's somewhat different for all of us, but I really feel like when I get still and I ask that, that, it's, that we're all here in some way, different ways, to be used by God. For, you know, for the spirit of love, the spirit that created the universe to do something through us that's for greater good. God, what do you want me to do today? See, because I want to do the right thing. I, and I think being of service really, you know, all, I, we talk about this all the time, but being of service is really the power of the universe. You know, your life is important. God needs you. Do not minimize yourself by thinking, oh, God doesn't need me. I'm just one person. What can I do? You know, God, again, God is not something you get. God is something that you give, all right? So it's not just about us. There is a power greater. And, and I think so many people are just so cynical. I, um, I've decided that that cynicism is maybe just an excuse not to expand, not to uh, participate fully, not to receive something better. If COVID is teaching us anything, um, and I think we're learning a lot about a lot of things. I certainly am now, now that I know that like, oh, this isn't just gonna go away. <laughs> See, I think if I knew early on that it was gonna last this long, I would have taken on um, tremendous projects. But I kept thinking, this is gonna end soon, this is gonna end soon, this is gonna end soon, and it didn't, you know? And so consequently, I do not speak any Latin now, you know? Um, whereas at the beginning of COVID, I might have taken Latin on. You know, and I might have taken on Chinese cooking, and I might have taken on a few other things that I know nothing about, you know, but I frittered away some of that time. See, I think we are learning about the power of love to heal, you know, and if we just sit back and let the darkness have its way, yes, things will get worse all over the place. They'll get worse for us personally, they'll get worse for us as a nation, they'll get worse for us globally. Absolutely, if we just sit back and let the darkness have its way, yeah, it's going to get worse. See, but God did not do this to us. Let's be very, very clear, you know. This, this was not God's doing, you know. 
Uh, so I could sit back and let that darkness wash over me, or maybe another option is on a daily basis to choose to stand as love. You know, before I leave the bathroom mirror in the morning, it's like, all right, God, today I want to stand as love in the world. So bring it on. Whoever comes to me, I want to be a loving presence. I want to be, you know, your consciousness here on earth. God's love on earth. See, the, this affects things I think that we do not even know when we say, I choose to stand as love on the earth here. See, because to be an instrument of love, I must, how do I want to say this? To be an instrument of love, I have to sur be willing to surrender all that is not love about me and say, okay, God, show me how to be loving here. Show me how to be loving here. Because, you know, like I've said, healing is most often a process. It's a moment-by-moment -moment choice. So great, a moment ago you were thinking high-minded. A moment ago you were thinking very affirmative, you know, but we're, what about now? And what about now? And what about, you know, it's an ongoing thing. Our one awareness at a time, one thought, one little healing moment at a time. You know, in the presence of light, we have to remember the darkness is just gone, right? So if enough people are being the light, there will cease to be darkness. So be clear, God does not make, did not, God did not make the situations that we find ourselves in right now that are so, so difficult. We did. And people think, oh, but all this love talk, it's so much work. And it's like, you know, I don't think that uh, love doesn't take energy. I think that resisting it is what takes the energy. You know, that all that pushback, all that digging in our heels. Not loving takes a lot of mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical energy. But giving love energizes us, right? Think about it. When we are loving, that's part, and we know that's what part of what we're here to do, we get energized from that. Every situation, I think, is an opportunity for us to show up as the consciousness we say we want to be, right? I can talk about being loving, I can talk about being conscious, but how do I actually show up, right? Can I be loving here? Am I willing to be bigger in this situation, you know? Emma Curtis Hopkins says the word repent means to turn to God, turn back to God. You know, so we got, traditionally it's interpreted as like to think again or to think in a new way. But Emma says to repent is to go in a new direction and that new direction is back toward God, back toward God. We're giving birth to a new world. And I think it's really important that right now, because we are the, 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 the midwives of this experience that we have to take this very, very seriously. Let's pray. So we turn, thank you. So we'll turn our attention inward for a moment now and just connect with that spirit of God within us. We just become still, we just become quiet, we close our eyes to the outer world and open to an inner world, an inner world of truth, an inner world of spirit, an inner world of love. So knowing that we are surrounded, we are filled with God's infinite, loving, intelligent spirit, and remembering that this spirit of God that is within us is the most true, most real thing about us, I further know that we are all connected with each other on the unseen side of life. And in this awareness of our connection, I speak the word for us that we get it. Yeah, it's late, that now is the time. We can no longer kick the can down the road. Now is the time to bring our best self forward to bring our most conscious self, our most loving self, our serving self, the best of God that is within us. We bring that forward now. And I know that by doing that, everything, everything changes. I know every person we meet, every relationship we find ourselves in, every interaction is divinely designed for us, for our growth, for our personal enlightenment, for the opportunity it provides us to be a light in the world. And so I know that when there is enough light in the world that the darkness cannot exist. And so I claim for us that each of us, we are a living light, the living light of God, expressing in perfect ways in the world. And I know what's ours to do, God gives it to us in a way that we can use and understand. So we include in our prayer today our family members and friends, parents and children. And we know that they are surrounded by the very presence of infinite loving spirit 
that they are healed and made whole, that their needs are met, and all is well right where they are. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And I know, I affirm, and I accept that we are blessed by being together today. That there is a conscious upliftment. We remember that God is not something that we get, that God is something that we give. And we get to give God away all the time. So everything that has been pulling at our attention this week as far as what looks like difficulty in the world, we remind ourselves God, spirit, love, truth are right there in the midst of that. And we see those situations healed and whole, everyone happy, peaceful, joyous, and free. So with the full heart, I give thanks that this is the truth. I release this word into God's perfect law. It could be no other way, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. guess what? I love you. I just called to say I love you. So when we get to that part, I want you to sing it to me. All right. Can we do that? <laughs> Just another ordinary day No April rain No flowers bloom No wedding Saturday Within the month of June But what it is That something's true Made up of these three say to you. Sing along with me, y'all. I just come to say I love you. I love you too. I just come to say how much I care. I just come to say I love you. And I mean it from the bottom of my heart. No summer high, no warm July, no harvest moon to light one tender August night. No autumn breeze, no falling leaves, not even time for birds to fly. 
southern skies No Libra sun No Halloween No giving thanks To all that Christmas joy you bring But what it is Something's true Made up of these three words That I must say with you Come on, sing those with me, y'all I just can't say I love you I just can't say how much I care I do I just can't say I love you And I mean it from the bottom of my heart One more time I just can't say I love you I just can't say how much I care I do I just can't say I love you And I mean it from the bottom of my heart Of my heart I love you. Have a wonderful week. God bless. The range on that man, huh? We love you, Adam. And you can keep on loving him getting, by getting his music at A-E-J-A-Y-E dot com. You're welcome. If this is your first time at our church, we are delighted you are here. Please stop by the welcome table on the patio to pick up a packet of information just for you. We're good about this. We make it easy for you to make donations to our church. Just text the text to give number and QR code are on your program or go to nhcrs.org slash give. Prayer with a practitioner is available after service in person and on Zoom. Wednesday evening service with Reverend Sidney Steen. Meditation is at 6.50 and service is at 7. Join Reverend Sidney this week as she shares on the topic, who is in charge here? Grief support group. This group, facilitated by practitioner Carol Winokur, meets today at 1 o'clock on Zoom. All are welcome. There is still time to sign up for Dr. Mark's Abundance Workshop. Mondays through August 22nd on Zoom only. Join Dr. Mark for this amazing workshop where you'll learn how to expand your prosperity consciousness. The class meets from 6.30 and goes till 8 p.m. and is based on the book Spiritual Economics by Eric Butterworth. Sign up online, cost is responsible giving. Book is available in the bookstore. Walk the Labyrinth. Come one, come all, and support your soul with the peace and blessing of a labyrinth walk. Friday, August 19th, 6.30 p.m. orientation and explanation for first-time walkers and walk from 7 to 9 p.m. Saturday, August 20th, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. healing walk. If you'd like to volunteer to support this ministry, please sign up on the patio. Practitioner graduation. Sunday, August 21st at 1.30 p.m. in the sanctuary. Four of our magnificent NHCRS members have successfully completed and passed their practitioner training. Please come support them and join in the celebration. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Zoom virtual patio, before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. Zoom meditation every morning, Monday through Saturday from 7.55 to 8.15 a.m. <laughs> Visit our website, nhcrs.org, to obtain Zoom links and more information about all our events and to sign up for weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. So let's all stand while we sing the peace song.
So please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.